Hello. I'm going to tell you a true story about Shoreditch Church. It started many moons ago. A couple ran an old coffee shop opposite here, and they did very well, and they were very happy, until one day they sat in the church garden and the leaves fell from the trees and they realized they just had one thing missing. They didn't have a child. So they went to see the witch in Victoria Park who lived behind a hedge and she gave them a special potion to drink and every morning they got up and they chanted a song Please bring us a baby from the windmills of our mind. However small, weak or ugly, we really don't mind. Well, just two weeks after that, the woman's nose grew as long as a sausage. And just two days after that, <gasps> choo, she sneezed and out popped a little girl just one inch tall. I'll call her Beatrice after the one who led Dante from the inferno, said her mother, for her mother was a soothsayer. Well, Beatrice proved to be an obedient, kind and helpful little girl. She dived down plug holes to clean them out She'd fix mechanical parts in the kitchen. But one thing about Beatrice is she didn't grow to be longer than just a lady's finger. But her hair, it grew and grew. And when it was her 18th birthday, her hair, her, which was a long plait, which she used to plait as she walked forwards and backwards on books, reading them, was as long as five men's arms. Well, her mum had baked her a special cake for her birthday. But unfortunately, on the same day, the coffee grinder broke. Well, Beatrice nipped inside to try and fix it. But because it was her birthday, her mum caught the back of her little tiny jacket and she said, you're getting too old now to be just hanging around our kitchen and fixing mechanical parts. Just because you're a bit undersized doesn't mean to say you're second rate. And her mother also said, in the future, there will be things so small that you can't even see them, but so powerful they'll be able to blow the planet off its orbit. And her father was overhearing what was being said just as he was carrying a tray of cups into the lounge. And he said, just because you're small doesn't mean to say you can't be mighty. Well, that night, Beatrice couldn't sleep all night because her father's words rang in her ears, just because you're small doesn't mean to say you can't be mighty. And the next morning, she put a thimble on her head and got a darning needle out the sewing box and posed on the kitchen table. I'm going to save the world, she said. And her mother shook her head. Well, I'm going to rule the whole of Shoreditch. And if I can't do that, I promise I'm going to save the world. Well, her parents scratched their heads and they closed the coffee house the next day. And Beatrice stood on the kitchen table, quivering. And her dad took a coffee pot from one of the high shelves. And her mother got a little mustard spoon. And her dad said, your ship to guide you on an adventure. And her mum said, your oar to take you there. And her dad picked up Beatrice off the table, put her in the coffee cup and put his hand over the top and took her all the way to the River Thames by the London Bridge.
and he climbed down and he put Beatrice into the river and she was taken up the river as far as Blackfriars where she was kind of grounded and she climbed out the coffee cup and then straight away she saw a length of rope going into the river she knew exactly what it was it was a trap because somebody had once tried to catch her in a jam jar in her parents' coffee house. She hated traps. So she bit through it with her tiny little teeth and straight away two bulbous eyes appeared in front of her. Go away, she said. And then they sprang out of the water and winked at her. It was a pike. Is there anything I can do to... Thank you for saving me from this trap. No, go away. Oh, actually, yes, there is something. I've left home for the first time and I need somewhere to get some work and stay for the night. So the pike opened its mouth, and swallowed her up and swam down, 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 down to the bottom of the Thames. Now, Beatrice's plait by this time was about as long as 30 men's arms and it was hanging out of the pike's mouth and she felt a tug on it and she poked her head out of the pike's mouth and before her stood the most beautiful mermaid with a tail made of music and she said, Help, I'm lost. I need to hear the bells of Shoreditch Church. And Beatrice said, Oh, I know exactly where that is. That's where I've come from. All you've got to do is swim against the tide as far as London Bridge. Oh, I'm so grateful, said the mermaid. Is there anything I can do to repair you? Well, I'd hate to get lost like you. If ever you get lost, just call out, ah, oh, said the mermaid as she swam away. Well, the pipe, the pike swam on further and further along the river until they got to the strand. And Beatrice stepped out of the pike's mouth and thanked him for his help and started walking up the river bank. And she bumped straight into a long lady's white skirt. And it was a bit boggy, so she nipped in the hem and lay there until the skirt walked into Green Park and lay down. And she climbed up on the knee and stood there and posed. Well, the white skirt wearer was completely beguiled by this little creature. And she said, hello, my name's Beatrice. I need to find somewhere to stay for the night and somewhere to work. Well, said the boy, whose name was Raphael, after the angel, I work as a washerwoman and my master isn't very nice to me, so God knows what he'd be like to you. Take me there. I can fix things. And anyway, I can be mighty said Beatrice. Well, Raphael carried her all the way to the wash house and standing outside was a man in a top hat for it was 1884. And he said, you're late. You're five minutes late. And he got out one of those pocket watches and Beatrice peeked out of Raphael's pocket and realized how important time was in this harsh world. Raphael quickly got Beatrice out of his pocket and put her on his hand and showed his master. She can fix things, he said. That's why I'm late. And the master looked at Fingerling and said, I expect all the machines to be fixed by midnight or I'll put you in the rat trap. And that was how Beatrice got her first job. Well, she and Raphael worked together very, very well. 
in the laundry. But it was very hard work for Raphael. He had to boil the water and get it from the well and wind the machines day and night. And Beatrice tried to cheer him up and she told him stories of Shoreditch Church and the angels there. She loved to see the angels when she went in her parents' pocket. Well, one day, Raphael left the wash house early and didn't come back for a while. And when he came back, he took off his shirt and he got a tattoo of the angel Michael on one arm and the angel Gabriel on the other arm. And Beatrice liked them so much that he kept his shirt off the whole afternoon. But unfortunately, the master came to check on the washing. And straight away, he saw that Raphael was a boy and he kicked him really hard. You sissy! And Raphael landed headfirst into one of the vats of boiling washing. As soon as the master was gone, Beatrice jumped into the vat of boiling water and boiling swam all the way around and couldn't find Raphael. And she poked her head out, gasping for air. And as she did, two beautiful Angels flayed from Raphael's arms, flew out of the boiling water and into the air, and they flew all the way to this church, up the aisle and into two cupboards on either wall. The cupboards where they used to keep the bread for the poor, they flew inside and closed the door. And Beatrice slept to the beautiful music of the angels. for 125 years and by now her plait was as long as 60 men and she looked around and she saw women in trousers and people staring at shining tablets and she said Excuse me, is this purgatory? And nobody answered. And then she saw the clock on the wall. She thought, ah, this will get a response. It's seven o'clock. And nobody answered. And she realized that she was completely lost. And then she remembered the promise of the mermaid. And she said, ah, ah, and straight away, a little unicorn arrived on the window ledge and she jumped onto its back and it flew up into the air. And when she looked down, she saw where there used to be carts and horses. There were like metal monsters breathing fire. And as the unicorn flew as far as Shoreditch Church, the first thing she noticed was the church clock on the exterior. It got the time wrong. It said seven o'clock. It couldn't still be seven o'clock. And she thought, I'm going to keep my promise. I'm going to rule Shoreditch. And she climbed inside the clock. And she stayed there for a whole year, counting the months, the weeks, the days, the hours, the minutes, the seconds.
until in 2019, there was some scaffolding on the front of the church and one of the builders had left their radio on and she heard talk of doomsday, two minutes to doomsday. She was terrified and she ran to the inside of the church and tried to look through the pendulum. Tick, 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 tick. And to try and get the people's attention, she lowered down her plait, her long plait into the aisle. And suddenly below, just as the ticking stopped, was a little unicorn with Raphael on his back. And he got a sword and he got like wings. He must have shrunk in the wash, thought Beatrice, as he galloped up her plait. And when he arrived at the top, she said, cut my plait off. I've saved the world, I've stopped the clock. And Beatrice and Raphael flew into the air and out through the cracks in the sky. So you see, mystery is here in the midst of where we are. And wonder holds the seeds of hope for everyone near and far.